What's going on? What do you have trouble with? Dude, going over for the fluids and trying to study for the fluids finally. I cannot relate how conservation of momentum has to deal with Bernoulli's equivalent and conservation of mass. Like, I don't understand how the sum of forces in one direction is equal to your momentum out minus momentum in. You understand it? Yeah, well, yeah, that's not that bad. Let's, uh, let's do an experiment, then we'll throw it, on, throw it up on the board, and I'll show you how to calculate it. Okay, cool. that sounds good. Let's go. All right, so I understand the experiment that we're going to conduct here. After we do our change in H, we have our volume. The volume over time is Qn. How does that relate to conservation of momentum? Okay, well, for conservation of momentum, you're going to have sum of your forces equals the sum of your momentums out minus the sum of your momentums in. And when you draw your free body diagram, you see pressure area in, pressure area that way. And then essentially what we're solving for is this force in the x direction that would keep the pipe from actually moving while it's inside of the tank. That's the force we're looking for ultimately right here. So whenever you bring that equation down, plug in your variables, you have PA, FRX, PA, and then your momentum and your two, V2 minus V1. It's max. So you're solving for this. What is that? Momentum? Yeah, momentum. Okay. Our next equation we're going to use is the conservation of mass equation. Um, here we have a volumetric flow rate in is equal to volumetric flow rate out. And you know, we also have mass flow rate in is equal to mass flow rate out, which comes to volumetric flow rate equals velocity times area. Okay, so that's how you relate your velocity to your volumetric flow rate, which is what we're going to do with the experiment. Right, exactly. Okay. All right, so once you come over here to Bernoulli's equation, the only thing we're looking for now is P1, because everything else we know. So once we can solve, we'll find our P1, and that's the last unknown that we'll be looking for. And that's all there is to it? All there is to it. All right, well, let's go do the experiment. All right, cool. We have a, we have a pump here, we have a gold pump. Uh, we're going to put the pump inside the tank. The tank's about 70 inches, about 70 inches approximately. We're going to see, uh, we're going to let it run for approximately one minute and see how much uh, the water goes down. And we're rolling. Okay, right here what we're doing, we're measuring the height drop and elevation of water. And we're going to take this number, multiply it by a cross-sectional area of the tank. And that's our volume that we used. And we're going to multi we're going to multiply it over the time. And that's how we get our volumetric flow rate of our pump. Okay, so we performed our experiment. And the main thing we were trying to find is this change in H right here. So we found the change in H over 60 seconds, which was... 1.65 inches, which com converts to 0.135 feet. We plug it into our equation with our area that we found earlier, and we come out with a volumetric flow rate in of 0 0.0769 feet cubed per second. All right, cool. So now we can take that and I'm going to solve for the velocity now. Sounds good. All right. All right, so now that we have our Q in, our Q equals velocity times the area, we have our Q. And we can also find our V1 and V2 because everything equals each other. We come out to be 7.28 feet per second for our V1. Our V2 is 25.06 feet per second. So now that brings us to Bernoulli's equation. We're solving for P1 here. We know our Z's canceled because there's no elevation change. We know both of our V's, so we can plug it into our equation. And we come out with 573 pounds of force per foot squared. Okay, so now we're coming to our last equation here. Earlier we talked about the R equation right here that we needed, and now we've found all of our unknowns. We found our P1, our A1. This is our one unknown that we're looking for here. We know, our, we know this cancels. We know our mass flow rate. We know our two Vs. So we plug everything in, and we get FRX equals to... 82.06 pound force. So that's it. That's it. That's all, that's all there is to it. All there is to it. We went through conservation of momentum and we showed in our experiment how conservation of mass and Bernoulli's equation 
helps everything out to solve for your force to hold the pump in in our situation or a pipe or a nozzle or anything to do like that. And it makes sense because 82 pounds of force, an average human could more than likely be able to hold that into place. So if we got some crazy number, it wouldn't make sense, but that number makes sense to me. All right, now I have a better understanding and I can hopefully I can do good on Dr. Zhang's final. All right. Thank you for you. And that concludes, I'm Jack Aller. Philip Dronet. And that concludes our experiment. Thank you. Thank you. Come again.